13, 2014, work session of the City City Council of Brookhaven to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, Mayor J. Max Davis. Here. Council Member Rebecca Williams, District 1. She'll be here. She is, uh, her mom had fallen down yesterday and she would, had to go take care of her, so she should be here and she said she'd be late, so okay. she will be here. And Council Member Bates Madison, District 3. Here. Council Member Joe Gebbia, District 4. Here. Thank you. We have, we a, have quorum. a quorum. Okay. Barely. Barely. Yes. Um, opening remarks. Did you want to make some opening remarks? Right. Yes, okay. please. All right. Um, and you'll do this again later, too. Right. Okay, great. All right. All right. Uh, I'm just going to read a statement about what we're doing here today. Shortly after I was elected to Brookhaven City Council, a good friend shared with me some startling statistics. According to the Georgia Partnership for Excellence in Education, Georgia public schools achieve a 59% high school graduation rate of rising ninth graders, of, of which only 22% are ready for college without needing remediation. Of these students, only nine out of 100 will receive a two or four year college degree. Governor Deals stated that in order to remain economically competitive, 60% of our students must achieve two or four year degrees by 2018, yet we're only currently at 9%. As executive director for the Institute of healthcare IT, my day job, uh, we recently issued a study showing that there are over 4,700 jobs in this high growth industry in which the companies can't find enough qualified students to fill their positions. It's time to start thinking outside the box in, uh, about education. In our city of Brookhaven 2013 budget, we approved funds to address three issues. <clears throat> One, conduct a study to look into uh, the feasibility of a city school system. Two, create strategies for partnering with Cab County to improve and support Cross Keys High School. And three, submit a petition for an independent charter school to be submitted to both the DeKalb County School Board and the State Charter Board for a K-5 growing to K-8, teaching the STEAM curriculum and align the current charter school and align with the current charter school, Shambly High, also teaching STEAM. I hope that our city's leadership and innovative approach will be seen as a partnership with our county and state education efforts. The education of our children and the success of our public school system has a direct impact on economic development. Our city will be far more successful if we have great public school options. In an editorial to the AJC in December 2011 describing his presentation to the Metro Atlanta Chamber, IBM Stan Litlow suggested creating public-private partnerships to tackle big problems. Neither the public nor private sectors can overcome our current challenges by acting alone. <clears throat> Furthermore, cities cannot su successfully attract and create jobs without coordinating education and economic development. But public-private partnerships can enable the creation and execution of targeted strategies that connect education to employment and improve other areas of urban life. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to our team uh, Gareth Ginner and Glenn Delk for a presentation on the initiative here. Edibate. 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 Thank you all for coming. As you know, as echoing what Bates said, we know that education is economic development, and we've got a strong interest in, in making sure that Brookhaven's economic development thrives, and education is a key part of that. So we're excited to go forward with trying to explore what we can do, whether it be an independent school system, a charter school system or an independent charter system. We, we appreciate your help and look forward to what you have to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. For the record, my name is Gareth Jenner. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Edivate, an educational consulting and management company that has been retained by the City of Brookhaven to assist with a range of educational products as outlined by the Mayor. This particular initiative was born from the overwhelming message that the Council has received from the Brookhaven citizens that education is a key economic development issue, and Brookhaven does not have an adequate range of public schools to support its economic growth. Brookhaven Innovation Academy is to be a state-chartered public school with one or more physical <coughs> campuses together with a virtual school program. The physical <coughs> campus will be located in the city of Brookhaven. DCAP County public schools located within the city of Brookhaven are often over-enrolled and in many cases underperforming. The only public high school physically within the city limits has a graduation rate that went from 42.4% in 2013 to 
to, uh, sorry, backwards, went from 51% uh, in 2012 to 42.4% in 2013. A significant percentage of Brookhaven residents send their children to private schools, not out of choice, but out of necessity. Brookhaven Innovation Academy will address not just overcrowding, but the acknowledged need for innovation in technology-based college preparatory education and the education and training of a 21st century technology competent workforce is vital and through the use of project-based STEM focused education, Brookhaven Innovation Academy will achieve that. If I can quote from State School Superintendent John Barge, there is a continuing void in STEM professionals in Georgia's labor market and schools that encourage students' passions for science, technology, engineering and math will go far to fill that gap. Brookhaven Innovation Academy is a Georgia nonprofit corporation. The corporation has a board of governors comprising the mayor and councillors of the city of Brookhaven, Georgia. The authority of the board of governors is limited to approving the bylaws and mission statement of the corporation and to appoint six members of the executive board of directors. The city of Brookhaven assumes no legal or financial responsibility of any type with regard to Brookhaven Innovation Academy. The parents of the students attending Brookhaven Innovation Academy will elect two members of the executive board and the Brookhaven Chamber of Commerce and the superintendent of DeKalb County School District will each be invited to nominate one member. The school will also have an advisory board of up to 12 members representing higher education institutions and local employers. The role of the advisory board is to expand the input from the community into the school and to advise on programmatic considerations related to the post high school careers, whether in college or the workplace, of the students that graduate from the school. Studies have shown that less than 38% of faculty and 40% of high school students are engaged and satisfied by 20th century style pedagogy based on memorization and lectures. BIA will combine proven project-based learning themes with academic rigor. The whole school will engage in semester-long themes with faculty and students seeking technology-driven solutions to the world and our region's most critical problems, such as the availability of clean water. These will be age-appropriate adaptations of the National Academy of Engineering's Grand Challenges program. We believe that every child can be educated, and we believe that every child has the capacity to benefit and participate in a challenging program of this type. Students that are college bound will be well prepared for college admissions and for their college career, while students who are not best served by immediately entering college will acquire credentialed skills that are needed in the workplace. They will acquire the skills that our employers in this city and beyond say that they need in order to fuel economic growth. Students in high school will also be able to participate in college level courses from sophomore year onwards. And they will have the ability to graduate from BIA with an associate's degree in addition to their high school degree. The educational program will be personalized for every child and it will be supported by the constant analysis of data so that each student's potential is fully realized. Any students that the data identifies are not being fully served will immediately be provided with additional enrichment or support as may be appropriate in each student in each subject area. Also through a one-to-one -one Google Chromebook program, students will have access to blended and virtual learning curriculum both at on campus and at home and students without home internet resources will be provided with the required resources. The intent of Brookhaven Innovation Academy is that each student <coughs> will achieve an overall academic growth equivalent to 1.5 academic year for each year of attendance, as well as acquiring usable and credential technology skills. BIA will implement STEM-focused, student-centered, project-based, and blended learning curricula. Students will become independent learners and executives. They will develop projects, they will learn to problem solve, and they will document their findings before presenting those 
to their peers and community. Both digital portfolios and something you will learn of called a GitHub code repository will accompany traditional tests and examinations. Throughout their school career, students will earn digital badges that incrementally credential the skills that they acquire. The school will also offer extended school day and school year options and a comprehensive summer academic and enrichment program. But here's one of the features that we believe is very important to creating a 21st century information-driven school. And that is that students will learn to code from kindergarten onwards. These students will routinely participate in team coding projects and hackathons. You will have seen many statements that coding is a key to future employment in our society. Indeed, this week there has been a great deal of publicity regarding schools that are embracing this concept. Brookhaven will certainly be, I believe, the first in the metropolitan Atlanta area to incorporate coding from kindergarten onwards. Coding isn't just about learning to program a computer. You learn logic. You learn problem solving. From someone who was educated before coding was at least publicly known, I often refer to coding as the new Latin. But foreign languages will be taught as well as computer languages. And both Chinese and Spanish foreign language programs will use immersion techniques supplemented by blended learning. And using the technology we will be providing our students and faculty, Google Hangouts, will them to talk with native language speakers in twin schools around the world. Our target is that each child should have absolute fluency in their chosen language by the end of eighth grade. A very different proposition to most students who leave high school knowing only the colors and numbers. Each student will have a personalized learning plan regardless of their ability level. We will chart a path for every student to be successful and we will provide them with a scorecard that we call a value added assessment scorecard. That monitors both their cognitive ability and their performance. The objective of this card is to provide their parents with complete transparency as the educational value delivered by the school. We will also be able to use that as metadata to look at the performance of the school as a whole, individual teachers, and individual courses. Brookhaven Innovation Academy adds to the range of educational options that are open. It's not intended to be a school that serves every student. We believe that every community needs a variety of school models to serve the preferences of both students and parents. Although the essential character of Brookhaven Innovation Academy is set out in the petition, there will be an ongoing process of community engagement to seek ideas and recommendations that will further shape the school. And anyone wanting to be placed on the communication list should register at brookhaven.education. And for clarity, all you type is brookhaven.education. You don't need to type anything else. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councillors, for this time. Recognizing that this was scheduled as a working session and time is limited, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Well, that's a very impressive uh, vision. I want to make sure people aren't confused that we don't have an academy yet. This is something we're working for. We don't have our yes, board and our incorporation yet. That'll all be come down the road. But I like the way you presented it in that you're envisioning something and assuming it's going to happen, which is going to make us all get on our sticks a little bit more and make sure that this does get done because it's a very exciting proposal. We support it. Uh, and I want to thank Councilman Madison for taking the lead on this because uh, from the beginning, his major... Uh, concern for Brookhaven is it has been education and he's taken the lead on this issue Bates and I really appreciate your leadership here and um, we're I'm glad that we've all jumped in with this all of us and we're excited about what's coming up and and I enjoyed meeting with you in the past and I enjoy seeing you in the future but questions I'm sure Rebecca I'm sure you got some great questions mm -hmm. I'll I'll ask a um, I'll ask one just for the benefit of the public uh, so the process, can you explain the process of our timeline from where we are today to opening of the school? Absolutely, and I do need to step back a day, Mr. Mayor. Brookhaven Innovation Academy, Inc. was incorporated by the state of Georgia yesterday. Okay. But at this point, it has no board members. Right. It is simply a shell corporation. Right. And it's anticipated that should you so determine, 
after this meeting, mm -hmm. the mayor and city councillors would become the initial board members of the corporation. Right. You will do so in your individual capacities, but ex officio, mm -hmm. meaning that, again, the corporation is not the responsibility of the city council. There is no legal action that city council has to take in that, in that regard. We have been working on a petition uh, very solidly for uh, the last two or three weeks. And the nature of the petition is that it is a petition for a state charter school. And the reason for that is that we want to have a statewide attendance zone, in particular for the virtual school. The physical campus attendance zone gives priority to residents of the city of Brookhaven, followed by residents of DeKalb County, followed by residents of the state as a whole. DeKalb County cannot grant a petition with a statewide attendance zone. Therefore, we have to put petition the state. However, uh, as you are aware, contact has already been made with DeCal DeKalb County and uh, a meeting has been arranged to discuss the possibility of working in cooperation. And it is possible that the physical campus could be operated within the DeKalb County school system under a contract, uh, but that is yet to, be, yet to be addressed. The timetable requires that we submit with the state by Thursday afternoon of this week at <coughs> 4 p.m. Uh, the petition will then be reviewed by staff. They will inevitably return with a list of recommendations and requests for information and clarification, which we will uh, satisfy. And after that, that, the petition is formally considered uh, for approval. And that process should conclude in October. For, <coughs> so at the, uh, if the charter is approved, the open date for the school would be the August 2015 uh, uh, school year, correct? August 2015, um, indeed, Mr. Madison. It is, however, proposed that once the uh, school is approved, we will start to plan uh, remedial level classes for students that are selected by lottery for admission who may need assistance in being ready for the school when it, when it actually opens. We want to give them a flying start. So the Brookhaven, you know, I think that they, um, one of the most important things that the public needs to be made aware of is that, you know, we're starting this dialogue with the public now to get their involvement. So the Brookhaven dot educate education, education. Brookhaven dot education uh, is the place to sign up to be remain informed and to have that uh, interaction with our citizens, correct? Absolutely. There will, of course, be public notices of all meetings that take place, but if citizens register on Brookhaven.education, we'll make sure we email them personally with all news and notifications of all meetings. Mm -hmm. what, what would be the, uh, the goal in terms of opening how many classes, uh, one, one class at a time, or all grades, or, or which class? I mean, the, what grade levels? The, the plan would be to open elementary school first, so a K-6 school, which would be a total of 420 students on the physical campus. We would, in parallel, have 420 virtual students. One of the benefits of this blended model is that the resources that are needed for the physical and blended students are, are complementary, and that substantially decreases the operating cost per student, which allows you to operate the school. Within the, within the amount of money that's set aside by the state. Where would the virtual students be based? How would they interact with <laughs> Anywhere in the state, Mr. Mayor. Would they be in a school? Would they be at no. home? They, they would typically be working from home. So some of these students would be homeschooled today. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be using, for instance, the Georgia Virtual Academy. Mm -hmm. But their parents will be seeking a STEM education. Okay. So this would be their only option to get a STEM education. In addition, we have proposed that any students resident within the city of Brookhaven, even if they're not registered at the charter school, will be able to access all of the STEM courses for free, regardless of the school they attend. Is there, um, are there admission standards, or is it just a straight lottery? We, we, we are obligated to use a straight lottery, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So you're not just taking the clean? <coughs> No, yeah. indeed not. And the model is specifically designed with the belief that we can effectively educate every child. Right. <coughs> this school should be representative of the city of Brookhaven, not of a subset of the city of Brookhaven. Okay. Mr. Jenner, I'm not sure you're aware, but uh, you know, this is the first presentation being made to council in our new city hall. <laughs> and how timely, yeah. because this is a uh, defining moment for the city of Brookhaven, what we're doing here. Um, as uh, 
Councilman Madison has mentioned earlier, probably one of the most often asked questions as politicians we get from our residents is, what can we do to improve our educational system? And up to this point, we've pretty much had our hands tied behind our backs. So um, thank you for your efforts. Uh, this is, uh, we're really excited about this. Th thank you, Councilman Gebbia. And I I'm privileged, obviously, to be the first speaker <laughs> here today, but also to work on this initiative because Brookhaven is creating a new model. Mm -hmm. This is a model that's provided for by the existing state laws, but nobody has really identified the opportunity and moved forward with it. So this is a, a, a very forward-looking council. And I suspect that this will become a model copied in many other cities once you have established it. Well, I know that uh, you have Ben Sayeski who works on data um, yes. for, for the charter. And, um, you know, some of the statistics I read in my opening statements about, you know, the current performance of our public schools in Georgia. You know, I think that at the end of the day that the, uh, the public simply deserves a, a uh, school system or school options that are really accountable, that hold their students to a higher standard and, and the school's administration to a higher standard. Because uh, without, without success school options, Brookhaven will, will uh, continue to remain anchored down. I mean, in my district alone, if I, uh, you know, I represent historic Brookhaven where uh, it's about half and half uh, city of Atlanta, which has uh, Sarah Smith Elementary as a, a great elementary school. And then on the other side, in the Cab County side, they go to Ashford Park Elementary, a great school, but not with the reputation that Sarah Smith has. And the property values are tremendously different. I would say 20% difference in, in similar square area uh, foot houses. So this has very much um, to do with economic development in our city our property tax values, what we can do as a city um, with the resources we have. And so I also thank you for your participation in helping us with this problem area. Thank you. I have one last question. You had mentioned twice the name Google. Uh, Google, <laughs> you said a Google Hangout, and then there was... Um, yes, yes, indeed, uh, Mr. Mayor. What was the... Google is a very forward-looking company in the field of education and has made a decision to provide a wide range of educational resources to schools at absolutely no charge. So all of the software is provided, the professional training, the infrastructure, it's all been provided at no charge. And we have been very fortunate in this exercise so far to have had very close support from Google uh, in pursuing this initiative. In fact, this, uh, we've had support both at the regional level and indeed at what Google refers to as the global level, because this initiative has been referred to as one that could have global consequences for education. I know that sounds very grandiose, but that was the phrase they used as opposed <coughs> to me. Wonderful. I, I personally think this is one of the most significant and far-reaching initiatives that our council mm -hmm. uh, could potentially take. Uh, I caution us all uh, that, that it is... Um, we still have some hurdles to cross Indeed. in terms of getting the uh, state petition and working uh, with the Cab County. And I truly hope that uh, we will be able to partner with the Cab County to make this work. I had a, a very encouraging conversation with Superintendent Thurman the other day, Excellent. and we both agreed that a, a partnership between the city and the county was a great idea, and that providing more options uh, is what is the direction they're headed in. The fact that they've even applied to, uh, applied to be a county charter yes. is going exactly in that direction to, to push the local control uh, down to the people is exactly what they're trying to do too. So I think this is a very exciting initiative and uh, I, I, I hope it comes true. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Thank you. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if uh, if you want to have Glenn or Ben uh, present I think anything. That, it's that up to you. You would certainly be interested in hearing from Ben his background sure. in uh, the data side of this and evaluating the performance of schools is is invaluable. Okay, thank uh. you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. My name is Ben Sayeski. <coughs> I'm the managing partner of Education Strategy Consulting. We're a data and analytics group out of Charlottesville, Virginia, and we've been doing big data analysis uh, for districts and charter associations for <coughs> seven years now. So I know you probably get asked a lot of favors, so the first favor I'm going to ask is I need to borrow one of your computers. You got it. Yeah. If, we, uh, 
Who's? You can use mine if you want. Well, all I need to do is I need to pull up a website that y'all can see and take a look at because I think better than talking about this in the abstract is if you could take a look at it. Daniel here. And um, and see what y'all need is uh, you have a link. To be connected here. Are you connected to the internet and to the screens here? You might can see the, the document web? management. Screen. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Go ahead well, and pull it up. Well, well, here comes our IT guy coming up here. <laughs> Let's get him connected. Can we just pull if it you up could, here? please. Yeah. Okay. What's the First day at City Hall, we're still working through the kinks on how to work this new technology up here. And pushing. Yeah, How's your mom doing? Do uh, get bigger? That'd be great. Better, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Is it right? Oh, here we are. Great. Ooh. Well, how do I get down to the bottom part of that screen? Here we go. Yeah, just use the uh, arrows on the side. There you go. I'll have a seat right here in case you need huh? All right. Y'all just be grateful that I'm not doing surgery on you. You know, this is actually, <laughs> this is hard to see from this angle, and uh, we'll see what we got. But let me, let me give you a quick idea about what we do and why we do what we do. Um, we certainly believe that charters can be uh, an option and a solution to things, but it's kind of like the R Ronald Reagan saying of trust and verify. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the research that we do is, is figuring out what's working, what's working out over time. So what I'm showing you right here is the Los Angeles Unified School District. Uh, a little bit bigger than Atlanta um, or the DeKalb, the surrounding areas. But the idea here is this. Um, what you need to be able to see and prove is that schools are making progress over time. And so within this, what you'll see in just a second is schools making movements. And your quick tutorial for uh, Evaluated analysis of big data using student level information is this. On your y axis, that's the test. That's your state test. That could be graduation rates. That can be anything. Uh, where you see a 3.0 there on the, on the x axis, that's your prediction. So that's if everybody did just as predicted. All right, so now you have two things that parents are mainly worried about growth and achievement. Are my, are my children growing and are they achieving? So you have four quadrants that work out right there. Your upper left is, is uh, achieving but not growing. Bottom left is not growing and not achieving. <coughs> Bottom right is not achieving but growing. So something you want to take a look at as an opportunity. And clearly where you want to be is in the upper right. So what does this have to do with charters? So La the Los Angeles Unified School District has more charters than any, um, than any district in the country. And if I can see that far away, what I can do here is say, well, people say, well, how are charters performing? And what I can do is to say, let's just take a look at the independent charters. And now all you're seeing are the independent charters in Los Angeles Unified School District. So when we do this overlay, what we can then do is say, okay, they're clearly nested more in this area. So you're nested in the kind of pro-growth areas, but there's some that you need to keep an eye on too. There's not as many as the traditional public schools in this quadrant, but this is an opportunity for the district as a policy or council members to say, how is this innovation working out over time? So which charters are working, which charters are not working? There's probably a little bit of a lag there with the data. So then you can go back over years and take a look at this and say, where are they coming in? What becomes more and more important as charters grow is to say which charter management organizations are panning out the most. So if you're going to reauthorize or somebody who's going to reauthorize, say where should we, in, which charter management organizations should we invest in? We color code those. We segment those by, <coughs> by the way that they are. Uh, and then we take a look at which ones are working and which ones aren't. 
it simultaneously becomes a tool for the district uh, or the school because you can then break it down by content area and grade level. Most parents also, I have two children myself, I, I'm concerned about elementary school. I'm much more concerned about fifth grade where my child's going into. So you could break it down, take a look at where the fifth grade uh, <coughs> is relative to everybody else. So in terms of the big data analytics, this is something that we think people should think about on the front end to say, how are we going to measure our effectiveness moving forward? So there's two things here. One is to take a look at something like this, and this also shows the need. So when we were about to roll out some um, pub publicly available data um, from Georgia, and then you could see what kind of options do people have, and then which options are created, how do those options fare relative to everybody else? You mentioned which um, charter management organizations mm -hmm. are, you can tell by this, which ones are more successful. Is there a certain, um, can you point to any that are more successful than others, or is there a type that's more successful? Or Well, here's how we do it with the Los Angeles Unified School District. I'm telling you all, this is hard to do with this mass. Uh -huh. This is good. Uh, so here's how we do it with... So these are all charter management organizations. Which were all every dot? Uh, no, sir. Uh, every dot is a school in the Los Angeles Unified School District. All these right where it says CMO, these are all ones that are charter management organizations serving. What color? LAUSD. They're all different colors. But if I do this, so I say, let's just look at Celerity Education Group. Mm -hmm. That's one of the CMOs. It just shows Celerity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then you can say, okay, well, where was Celerity back in 07, 08? Wow. And you say, okay, that was a situation of Celerity in 07, 08 when they started, and where have they been since then? Get it together, get it together. <laughs> hey. New principle. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. So you can do that with every charter management organization in here so that you get a, a really good idea of, you know, are the things that people are saying, are they true, are they panning out, and which models, because they all have different models. Mm -hmm. um, and then within those models, there are even gradations of those models as well. So that's how we would traditionally take a look at something like that. So celerity with those four schools, or three, however it was, started off on the left bottom of the y-axis. Bottom left. And by over three or four years, moved to the right. <coughs> yes, sir. First year they made that quantum leap. Oh, did they? First year. You know, I think I think one of the great takeaways from this is that you look at uh, you look at the data and you can actually analyze performance. And um, you know, I would love if the state of Georgia or our county school system uh, ran this data on all of our schools because you do want to look at what is the what are the decision factors or the criteria that are making schools successful mm -hmm. and take your low performing schools and uh, learn from you know take their management team to the high performing schools and and let them talk and discuss I mean this is an issue that is larger than Brookhaven uh, or even our county this is a state of Georgia issue that, that we need to Mr. really Madison fix. If, I, if I could uh, that's the reason we have Mr. Sieski here is because in order for you to to be able to prove to your uh, taxpayers that you've uh, done a good job with their money, you need to be able to show where they are now, the students, and where they're going to be in five years when you're going to be applying for renewal. And so that same chart that you've seen uh, with respect to LA Unified, <clears throat> Mr. Sieski and his company will be doing for us with respect to this one school, beginning now, where they are, and where they are in five years from now. And you'll be able to tell how well or how poorly uh, we're doing. And that's Mr. Glenn Delk from Innovate. What is the name of this website? Uh, this is www, and I can provide this as well, dot ESC matrix, sir, matrix dot com, and then forward slash LAUSD. Ben, and you might Madison. tell them a little bit about uh, the other cities around the country where you uh, do this uh, uh, sure. analysis. Uh, Los Angeles, Arizona, uh, Newark, Memphis. So there's a number of different areas. And I did want to point out the map there, too, uh, Mr. Madison, speaking to your point. I've never done this presentation where a parent hasn't said, this is my kid's school right here, uh, whether it's a, it's a red school. And then they kind of zoom in on that school. And they say, well, what are my options? 
So where could I be going to school? Are there other schools in this area that are performing? That is the when they see this information in this map, they want to go right to the grade level of their child, see it on a map, and they want to know what they're Schools in L.A. are charter or independent charter schools? Uh, about 12 percent. So there's a, what, a total of 100 and something there? 100 and something there of a total of 1,100 schools. Oh. They have roughly uh, 800,000 students, so it's a little over 100,000 students are attending charters in LA. How, five years ago, how many did they have in charters? Do you have any idea? Uh, probably in the 50,000 range. Mm -hmm. uh, they've made a uh, systematic push, as other cities have. Uh, you may or may not know, for instance, in New Orleans, since Katrina, 90% right. mm -hmm. uh, of their kids now attend charter schools. In Washington, D.C., 60% of their children attend charter schools. So it just depends on the location. What are you back from? From well, from uh, our perspective, the, the major pushback is we have to uh, be able to demonstrate to the Charter Schools com Commission that this is a unique and innovative approach and that we've addressed all of their issues. Um, we are taking a different approach than charters have in the past and that we are attempting to do a public-private partnership. I was involved in a similar effort that resulted recently in the Atlanta Board of Education approving <laughs> a partnership with Integral New Schools Atlanta <coughs> for an elementary school across the street from Georgia Tech called Centennial Place. It's also going to be a STEM focus. So we think by proposing a partnership with uh, your uh, mayor and city council, with your uh, taxpayers, uh, and with DeKalb County, as well as the business community, we think we can get support. And just by way of indication of the interest, we focused on STEM because of uh, the reasons that Mr. Jeff uh, and uh, last Friday, the Technology Association of Georgia held its second annual uh, STEM Day. They had 620,000 people throughout the state participate. Uh, it's just an indication of how uh, growing uh, the interest is. And my final comment, and I'll shut up, is I don't want you to hold against Mr. Uh, Jenner that he has that English accent of, <laughs> and, and pronouncing DK. <laughs> if I may register, President, Dr. Welsh. <laughs> I'm a well so, so that's good. One last question sure. for you, Ben. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, would you, um, in the past, would you, wouldn't, uh, if you could mention your, your company's involvement in the Walton Foundation and why they have you evaluate these schools and, and sort of uh, how that helps provide some accountability to which schools their foundation um, provides funding to? Sure, they do this for internal research purposes so that they know uh, there's 18 sites across the district, I believe something like that, 18 cities where they invest. And so as part of that uh, research effort, they do this kind of analysis for, for every district so they know uh, where they're supporting, is it making a difference, what's the impact on, on charters they're supporting on the, the charter sector uh, independently, so what quadrants do they end up in. And it's just a good third party evaluation to say, you know, is it coming out the way that we think that it's, that it's coming out. And then conversely as well, um, it's always a best practice finder. I mean, there's, there's no, these are not nuclear secrets that we're trying to hide from one another in education. And that it doesn't really matter if that, those dots that are blue up there are, are charter public, those should be learning lessons for everybody. Mm -hmm. And to those uh, points, uh, Walton is the largest investor in the charter segment. Uh, annually they invest over $150 million, uh, which is why they utilize his uh, proprietary strategy. And to your question, Mr. Mayor, about you know, successful charter management organizations, there are a number of them around the country. Because we haven't been that friendly uh, to charters here until recently, we don't have that many here in terms of startups. Uh, but one of the models that we're attempting to emulate, is, um, as Mr. Madison knows, is uh, the High Tech High Charter Network out of San Diego. Uh, and the statistic that he gave earlier in terms of the number of ninth graders who get uh, a two or four year degree in Georgia, college degree, is nine. Uh, high Tech High has been around since uh, 2000, and their comparable number is 88. Uh, we're not saying we're going to achieve that, but we certainly are going to strive for that uh, that goal. I have one last question. As a non-STEM guy, I've come from the like other me. <laughs> come from the other side of the brain, and my kids kind of, you know, are, are that way as well. Um, the liberal arts side. Is there a? Uh, it sounds like what the focus is seems to be on STEM. I, every child needs that, but is there a 
path for kids who are whose gifts are a little bit different in that way? That's a question for, for me, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it is indeed a full and comprehensive liberal arts program. Mm -hmm. It's just that the use of STEM is also incorporated into <laughs> each of those areas. As we saw today, uh, the ability to manipulate this technology to make this meeting function <laughs> is absolutely essential. Right. And so we're all going to have to use STEM skills. Right. But there is a full liberal arts curriculum. And from ninth grade onwards, the students have a choice, in fact, from over 200 high school courses and 4,000 assessed open education resource courses, which were at a college level. So it's going to be a tremendous range of courses for a tremendous range of students. Okay. Mr. Jenner, um, I heard liberal arts, I've heard STEM. Is there any accommodation for vocational? Uh, absolutely. If we, if, if we start to look at STEM, uh, the vast majority of jobs in STEM are vocational. Over 50% of the jobs that are being created in the United States right now are called mid-skill jobs. And those mid-skill jobs all require STEM skills. The reason that we have this situation where you have 22 million unemployed or underemployed citizens and 6 million unfilled skilled jobs is because those unemployed workers don't have STEM skills. And so this is very much vocationally focused. In fact, one of the options at high school, in addition to the high school curriculum, as an alternative to taking the associate's degree, is to earn a whole range of industry-recognized vocational certifications. So students can be certified in over 600 different occupational fields while they're in high school. And again, we reverse engineer this to find out what jobs are there in this locality, what do employers say that they're going to want, then we make sure we offer those courses to the students. Um, how is all of this financed? Um, <laughs> the, maybe this yeah. is a question for Glenn. But no, no, no I, I, I have just finished two days of polishing the budget, okay. so I'm very familiar with the, with the answer. A state <laughs> charter provides only a limited amount of financing. Uh, but one of the important elements of this model is that it combines a, uh, a campus-based model with a virtual school model, and that is very, very efficient. So although the average amount of money we'll be receiving per student is only around $5,600 from the state, if we have to go with a state charter uh, also for the physical campus, we, we have a blended budget, effectively. And there is startup money that is needed. It won't be coming from the city. It'll be coming from private philanthropists. That's a relatively small amount of money, around $400,000 over the first year. After that, the school can function entirely within the budget that is paid from the state. It would, of course, be nice to have more money. But we have a budget that functions perfectly well. And that has been calculated so that the school could, in its third year, have a purpose-built facility and repay the loan on that facility over a 30-year period. But do you, would, would you seek um, funds from DeKalb County or, or as, as part of the partnership? Or if, if, if we were able to enter into partnership, and obviously that, that is our hope, then the funding that would come from DeKalb County is considerably higher. And so we would be able to move <coughs> faster, particularly with capital development of the, of the school. So, so we just need to get them to buy in and and let them be a part of it. I, I, sincere, I sincerely hope so. You know, the superintendent has made it clear that, that mm -hmm. they want to create more options and that they're committed to becoming a charter school system. Therefore, I would expect them to uh, have great interest in this. So, so from $5,600, what, what, what would you estimate the increase would go to with DeKalb County support on this? Probably three to four thousand dollars. In addition. In addition, yes. Well, from eighty-six to ninety-six. It's it's, it's a considerable <laughs> sum of money. Yes, really. Uh, and it would enable the school to be on a more solid footing in that it wouldn't have to carry the debt of the school facility and pay it down over a thirty-year period. Is there, I mean, is there no voucher? I, mean, I guess this vouchers are. Uh, there's no. That's don't a, use that word. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the legislators don't the, like that word right now. There are. Do, yeah. <laughs> there, 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 there are no vouchers applicable, but there are supplementary sources of funding, and we certainly will be applying for those. The budget, however, has been prepared on a worst-case scenario, and indeed, the state asks us to both to prepare a budget. Uh, on our enrollment projections, which given the waiting list at charter schools, we believe will be met, but also on 65% of projections. And we can even make it work on 65%. So again, worst case. And then hopefully we'll be in a much stronger position than that. Yeah, yeah just, to, just to go, some of the numbers. So the, so the state of Georgia spends $17 billion a, a year on education. It's the largest single item on our state's <coughs> budget. And um, I believe around 12, uh, 
what's the number of how much goes K through 12? Glenn, do you, uh, you know? That's 17 billion for K-12. Oh, that's uh, 17 billion for 8 K-12. billion of that is state money, and 9 billion oh. is local district money. Right, so the 8 billion that the state is spending, um, you know, the governor went through a lot of great effort to pass the charter amendment uh, law, <laughs> and yet it's not been utilized very often because of this funding issue. So I know that, um, I believe that the state legislature has an interest in fixing this funding issue because if you can create schools that are more successful, why not fund, use those taxpayer dollars for the more successful schools that have figured it out? And the, the great thing about a charter school in itself is the requirement for accountability, whereas a traditional um, you know, county school just operates under the guise of maybe a, um, an organization like Ben's taking a look at it. Uh, but um, there's nothing in the charter contract for those schools that says you might lose your contract if you don't perform at a certain standard. And, uh, and these independent charters must perform under those standards of their contract or the charter, um, the, charter cri- the, the evaluations put forth in the charter. Indeed, those are excellent points, and I would mention that in addition to the state-mandated assessments, we're going to run a parallel assessment system using the ITBS. Um, The Iowa Test of Basic Skills, which most of you will be familiar with, uh, is a broadly accepted test that will allow us to provide comparisons not just with the state standards, but also with national standards that relate to both public and private schools. We're going to run both in parallel so that we really are transparent and allow parents to see the performance, again, not just against public schools, but also against the private schools. And it's correct that you don't have a facility yet. And are you worried about that? Uh, No. Uh, There are a number of locations that that we have looked at. The plan is based on a relatively small enrollment initially and for the first two years, because we assume we'll have a permanent facility in place by year three. Uh, Right now, for the type of limited Uh, facility we will need, particularly for K-6 students. Uh, There are a wide range of options that that are available and and vacant and would be very welcoming of the revenue. Would you think about adding a grade every year? That is is the the plan, (laughs) Mr. Mayor. All right. Well, thank you very much. We've got an open open house here in just a minute. We appreciate it. Um, We're excited about this. And Mr. Mayor, before we go, if you decide to move forward with this uh, by Thursday, I need your signature on the (coughs) petition cover page, and then I need each of you to sign uh, and fill out the conflict of interest form. Uh, The petition is due uh, down at the State House by 4 p.m. on Thursday. So if if you guys could get to this tomorrow, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Yes? We'll need to amend the agenda for you to consider that to um, Let's do that tonight. Well, if I may may just uh, clarify. The uh, <coughs> executing this document is an individual act of the directors oh, who are going yeah. to join the corporation. It is not an act of the city. Okay. Okay. My understanding is, while you have better ex- legal expertise available than mine, this isn't in fact a legal act of the city. It is the individual uh, mayor and council members who are becoming a member of the 501c3 corporation. Okay. We'll look at well, that. Tom, kind of have like a G- city attorney looking at Kind of like a GDA. Yeah. Put Thank us in jail you. if we sign for this <laughs> new school. Put me in jail. No, far from yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, if it's wrong, you. if it's Thank wrong, you all guilty for the presentation. <laughs> Thank, okay. you. Thank is this, you. Is this open like for comments? Maybe like. Well, we gotta we gotta move on. Um, do you have any comments from anybody in the? Uh, okay. We have Cross Keys Foundation president here. Just. Okay. This is the work session. You wanna? Hmm? This is not the work session. This is a work session. Yeah, so this is the work so session. So we okay. can't just comments uh, up here. Okay. All right. Um, well, we have five minutes. Mm-hmm. Before the open house, mm-hmm. um, go ahead. Do we, do we have to finish anything on this agenda? That's the only item we have on the agenda. Oh, for this work session, mm-hmm. okay. Right. right. Okay. Can't add anything because it was a oh, special. Oh, so we have call. a little more time. We have five. Correct. Right. Okay. You, or you what? can take a little break. Yeah. <laughs> Mike needs a break. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we'll take a five minute. No, we'll just, we'll just adjourn. Let's just adjourn. Right, Is adjourn. a motion? I move that we adjourn the work session. And I second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of adjourning the work session, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Uh, Open house.